Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Uh, so as you can see, we have a different setup here today. Um, I had some requests, just a couple little simple things. One of those is how to verify an ISO image in the command line. And another was actually setting up VirtualBox. So uh, what I did is I brought out my, um, uh, my KDE computer. Now if you notice, this is the same computer running right here. Um, this was the old hard drive. If you remember, I did a video where I talked about how to use Clonezilla. And this was literally the old hard drive of this computer. But I've never installed VirtualBox on it, uh, mostly because the drive is it's old and slow. And so uh, it's this computer is actually a little slow just because of the hard drive in it. And so I don't get super good performance on it. It does a great job for media and other stuff that this computer does. And this drive is slightly faster. Um, but um, what I wanted to do is... Just do a real quick video here. Um, I was pretty busy this weekend and I will be taking tomorrow off. So if you are following my channel regularly, um, I do not expect to see a video. Uh, we will be postponing the tinfoil hat time this week. Uh, but in the live feed that I did last night, if you caught that, uh, a lot of people were talking about wanting to do a tinfoil hat time live. And two live streams ago, somebody had brought up the light bulb conspiracy. And so what we're going to do is a live streamed tinfoil hat time on planned obsolescence with a focus on uh, looking at some of the concepts in the uh, light bulb conspiracy. So you can actually find that on, on YouTube um, and probably some other places out there as well. Uh, but what we're going to do here today is uh, just go ahead and have a look at uh, just a couple of real quick ones. I expect this video to be pretty short. We're going to look at how to install VirtualBox. We're going to look at VirtualBox in a software center if we have it and or in a terminal. We're going to talk about how to verify ISO images and how you do that. Now, uh, granted, there are a couple different ways of verifying your ISO images. There's potentially more secure ways, less secure ways. I'm going to show you the easiest way. It balances the simplicity and all this. One of the methods wants you to verify, like verify a PGP file, import the key into your system and do all this. And to, to me, when I was first reading instructions that sounded like that when I started on Linux, I'm like, Ugh. so I got in this bad habit of not verifying ISOs. I'm like, well, that's kind of a bad deal. But then when I started putting together uh, the initial videos here for Switch to Linux, uh, what I wanted to actually do is talk about, um, uh, you know, ha all of the best practices, which included that. And so I went down and figured out the best ways to uh, to verify your, your ISO images that you're downloading. And I'm going to show you a method today. It works perfectly fine on any Linux system I tried. Um, and obviously we are here on Linux Mint KDE right now. And uh, this is my nice cool build. I thought about changing the theme around, but I know a lot of people like this theme. So I said, ah, we'll run with it. Um, so I have here a Linux Mint ISO uh, image. And what happened is I had this ISO image on my other computer, which, um, which worked. But as I tried to transfer it over onto this drive, it would not transfer properly onto the drive. Now it looks the right size, and if we boot this up in a virtual box, and we might today, depending on our time, uh, how long it takes us to get there, um, it may or may not work. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you that it's not actually correct. There is something that is missing from the file. I don't know what it is. It's the correct file size, but the ISO image is not verifying. So I am currently right now downloading Zorin OS, which, uh, good, only has a few seconds remaining. So we will have uh, a, a hopefully working download as well. Uh, so once that is uh, ready to go, then we're going to jump into the, um, the system and talk about how you do your uh, ISO images. Uh, a little bit about my setup today. Obviously, I don't have my, my cool banners that I've been doing lately. And the reason is uh, this computer, it might actually have OBS. I don't know. Let me see if we have OBS on here. Yeah, we do have OBS. I never bothered to get it all configured and all that kind of stuff. It's just so much easier to just throw a screenshot down here in the corner and run simple screen recorder in this setup. So, you know, I'm running this one quite a bit different. I do know how to use all those other software packages as well if uh, if you do need settings on those. So, 
I have uh, this expanded onto a double desktop. Here's my simple screen recorder manager menu. And I'm also running um, GUVC view for the camera. And of course, what's cool about running this for the camera is you can do cool stuff with the, uh, uh, with the image here. Um, the only downside is I can't, uh, I can, this is a good program if you want to record either a small window here and of course um, you're able to right click here and turn on or turn, turn off border. So I have it above others and then uh, there's also an option to turn on or turn off your, um, uh, your uh, borders which is not on this particular one here. I'd have to load that up somewhere else. But um, so I, what I did is I turned off the borders and I sized it and shaped it and moved it. Um, but you can't record, you can't do a whole studio format that OBS does. And the other problem I've encountered is while this records really good, really high quality video, it records file sizes so large that um, uh, even Caden Live has a difficult time editing them. And that's why I, I don't use this program quite as much for recording. Although if you want really, really high quality, it works. All right, um, so uh, with all that being said, our download should be done. So I'm gonna go into my downloads folder. Of course, this is KDE, so I have to be careful uh, to actually select stuff properly, not just dragging things around. So we're going to copy the file over here. We could have just moved it, I'm sure. All right, so now I have Zorn OS and I have Linux Mint OS. So to verify an ISO, first you need to know what your checksum is going to be. So up here, if you go to the website, so I have Linux Mint's website, and then um, usually you just have to hunt for the thing that'll say verify your ISO. It usually should be in or around, somewhere around the, um, uh, the page. And I'll say as well, it is very possible that um, I, I do, did have the correct uh, verified image, but it may have changed since I downloaded it. It has been a while since I downloaded this image. Um, so, um, but anyway, you click down here, we're going to click the verify the image. Some sites give you a better um, idea about how to verify them, some of them do not. Um, so we're going to select our distro. Now here, uh, this is where you can get into the more complicated, where you can use the signed image here, and this will just double check and verify everything. I'm generally okay without using the signed um, I'm okay with just verifying with the checksums here and the downloads there. Now, if you're in a super, super secure environment, you want to verify the absolute best that you can. That's not the environment we happen to be in. All right, so in this case, um, you know, I'm just downloading these for, for testing usually. Um, so here we just have to find the correct uh, one, which is this guy right here. And then of course for the Zorin, um, we have to come down and find the download and then down here is where the checksums are here So you have to look for checksums or verify your download and then here's where they have their checksums All right, so I'm going to do these to the terminal So I'm going to boot up a terminal on this computer I just have a terminal right over here and what I need to do is I want to get to wherever the images are So I drop both these on the desktop uh, Wherever you happen to be we just need to get there. So in a terminal we're going to type CD space and desktop and you do have to type it um, exactly as it is now why just type desktop because this defaults to put you inside your home folder so your home folder contains all your files if you want to do something goofy you could go you know cd there and that'll get you to your main root directory of course i think we can still get the desktop from here um, so there we are so dir will get you a directory i'm going to do this because you know, as, as an old professor I had in chemistry, you say chemists are inherently lazy. And so why type all this out when you can copy it? And so first we're going to look at Linux Mint. So I'm going to copy this. Right click it, copy it. Um, also uh, hold sh control, shift, and push C for that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in SHA256. And that was because the checksums we have are in uh, SHA. Now these here, does this actually tell me? Yeah, so these here tell me these are SHA256. This is the most common checksum you're gonna get. Um, and here you can see our text file is an SHA256 sum. 
So we're going to do SHA256 sum and then the file name. So I'm going to hold Control, Shift, and push V and then let that do its thing. It's going to give you out a number. Now if you really want to verify things, you can boot up an Excel sheet. So I'm going to um, I said Excel. Ah, I gotta train myself out. I train myself not to say Google when I'm talking about an internet search. I do say internet search now. Um, so what we're gonna do here is with my spreadsheet. Just gonna make this guy a little smaller here. Okay. So here it gives me this checksum here. So I'm gonna copy this. Now, what you might be able to simply do is, is just look at this and just compare it to the numbers and check it out. You can see quickly by looking at that comparison, this is not correct. But if you really want to be sure, um, you can come over here, right click, paste this in, and then we'll copy it from over here as well. We'll paste this in. And you can do a comparison here. Now, of course, they're copying in in different fonts, so just make sure they're the same font and the same size. Okay, this is the stuff I'm talking about. This, this, it, the hard disk causes this to not quite be as responsive. So I can clearly, clearly see these are not the same. If you really want to double check, you can do a conditional. So if, and then I have to, uh, let's see, I think I have to do if. And then I have to do a conditional for, so what's my test, then my value, then my otherwise value. So if this cell equals this cell, then print one, otherwise print zero. So now you can see it says zero. That means that, hey, we did the test. These two columns do not equal each other. Now, hopefully the Zorin will equal. So. What we're going to do is, uh, I still have it up here on the screen, or do I? Yep, there we are. So I'm just going to copy the Zorin. Now, if you're in the terminal, you can easily go back up to the previous command just by pushing the up arrow. And I just, can just do that, backspace out the Linux Mint, paste this in like that, press Enter. Of course, in this case, it didn't work because I got that little, um, I got the little space there, if you notice. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Um, I just want to make sure I get that without any spaces or anything there. Of course, it was probably doing a thing just fine. I just wanted to do that again just to verify it. So hopefully this is going to, going to work out better this time. So we're going to come up here, back into here. We're going to go ahead and just delete these two. You'll see since those are both clear, now that, that equals one. Okay, and then now we're going to come back up to Firefox, find our checksum, and double check the file that you have. We have the OS 12.1 Core 64, of course, yep, yeah, there it is, 12.1 uh, Core 64. So this is the guy here that we need. Come on, spreadsheet. There you go. Okay, so you can see here that these are the same. We can quickly see it. And of course, our sum tells us that yes, they are the same. So Linux Mint ISO is not verified. The Zorn ISO is verified. So that's how I do a checksum verification. Make sure that my, um, uh, just make sure that everything is, is properly verified. So that's a, a quick and easy way. Now, a couple notes. Um, you might occasionally find something that's in an SHA uh, 512 or in, you might find an MD5. You might find something else. Um, I know FileZilla encrypts uh, passwords as base64. Uh, so pretty much all of those things, you could get any of these sums just by typing it in. So if I want to know what is the MD5, which is a different um, thing there, so you just do MD5 sum, and that'll spit out the MD5 checksum for it. You'll see that it's quite a bit smaller than the 256. That's because MD5 is an older encryption style. It's not particularly secure anymore, um, but it is still used a lot um, in some applications. Although the uh, SHA-256 is, is certainly a lot better for a checksum. So uh, that's just a, a brief word on that. Uh, now let's have a look at, because people asked about how to install VirtualBox. 
Um, so first I'm going to double check, see if it's in the software repository. So I'm going to find the software manager, I believe it is on this one. Wants a password, which actually prompts the password up over here. And see how slow this computer is. It's it's uh, not because KDE is slow. It's because the hard drive is way, way old. So I'm going to look at VirtualBox. I'm just going to type in Virt. It should get me something. So you can see here it's VirtualBox. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and click on this you'll see that it's installing. Now we're gonna go over to VirtualBox uh, website and have a look and see if, um, uh, see what the current versions are. Some 5.1 branch it looks like. So we're just going to double check that. Um, some distros, this is one of the things that, that is a difference between some distros is versions of software may not always be right. So I know on Linux Mint uh, for a while, and I'm not sure if it's still true, but Caden Live seemed to be broken in the version that it was in there. It just didn't work. And I had to use Caden Live at one point in time. I used to use OpenShop for all my video editing. But I had a problem with Kden Live not uh, not transferring the file over correctly, and so I actually had to install it with the PPAs to get the most recent version. Um, and so if you encounter a situation where the uh, where the virtual box is not the most recent, you might have to go in and follow these more complicated instructions. Um, but then. Generally, you don't anymore. Um, I'm finding most software packages or, or most distros, at least the ones that I use on a regular basis, do have the more up-to-date software. So you're kind of okay there. 97%. Write that down. Where are we at? 5.1. So 5.1.18. And actually, I think I saw, I think my, my virtual box on my other computer is a little higher than that. I'll write that version number down just to check it. Okay, so it says that's installed. We're just going to minimize the software installer for now. We're going to see if that installed. few different things in there. Let's look in the applications. I generally don't uh, don't install it through the graphical installer so occasionally you encounter a software package uh, that um, uh, where's that at? Occasionally you encounter a software package that uh, there will be a few different packages in there, and, and I don't always know which ones are which. Um, so I'm not seeing VirtualBox show up here anyway. Mm, looks like I need to fix the uh, settings there. I'm going to fix my OpenGL settings if I can. If I can remember how, uh, I think it's display and monitor. Yeah, it says it's on. Hmm. Oh well, not there. All right, let's go back. Okay, that's VirtualBox base. This one might be the one we need to install. 
I bet that's the one we needed to install. Sometimes you just have to examine which one. I think the base will give you some of the core files and this, let's see, virtualization on wide range. Sometimes reading is, is beneficial too. QT base, okay, yeah, this, this here is, tells me it gives us the graphical user interface for it. That was my mistake. Sometimes you have to make sure you're installing the user interface. That's the thing in Linux is you could run the program from the, uh, you know, from the terminal uh, using all the terminal commands that I don't know. Um, in this case here, you also need to sometimes make sure that you have the user interface there as well. And that's what, uh, what had happened there for me. I was reasonably sure I was going to do that. So. <laughs> That's the fun thing on Linux. You just gotta pr probe and try. If that didn't work, I was just gonna go to the terminal and type in sudo app get install virtual box. That would have done it. <laughs> there, virtual box. All right, so VirtualBox seems to be running there. Let's see. So it looks like it's set up. Let's go ahead and tr um, we're gonna try and run this Linux Mint. Uh, remember, this Linux Mint is the one that the ISO image was not properly verified. So I am expecting this to not work. Oh no, we, we're, we're, we're doing some RAM on this guy. No, not audiobooks. All right, let's see what happens. So it looks like it's... Okay. So the mouse is captured. That's what that screen was about. If I clicked it out too fast, that means that if I try and wiggle my mouse around, it's kind of lost. Um, and that's kind of happens on the, uh, kind of on the boot up screens sometimes. Uh, a few distros might do that, like for example, the uh, the Android system uh, will do that as well. If you get into that case, the right control on either a Windows or a Linux or the left command on a Mac will get you out of that. Looks like it is actually going to boot up. I'm going to set it over here for now. I'm going to um, do one for the Zorin as well. I think Zorin's based on Ubuntu, right? No idea. Oh, of course, the other thing I didn't do is I didn't uh, give the thing enough cores and stuff as well. So I didn't ch change any of my settings there. So we'll do that over here. All right, so you see it kind of got me to this guy right here. So yeah, not very good. Um, I'm going to power off that machine. I'm going to come over here. Uh, do what we usually do with VirtualBox, just up the cores a little bit, up as much as I possibly can here. Start that one up and set that up there for now. I'm going to see if just changing the settings in the Linux Mint would, would fix it at all. Okay, let's see what happens. 
Looks like Zoran's going to do something. And they're off. Zorn's come around the corner. Taking a quick lead as it expands the window size. And there, Linux Mint boot screen is finally showing up. Zorn's is already off. It's off to the races. Let's see who can boot up. Linux Mint might just stumble again, but Zorin may zoom. And looks like we got some Zorin going. We're just going to try it. I'm imagining that we're having issues related to having an, an, an old, 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 old hard drive. That's what my thoughts are here. I'm not sure. Oh, it's, it is up. Okay. Well, it, it is up. It seems a little slow. All right, but here's your Zorn. Of course, I'm going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hold held uh, the right control, push F. That'll switch you into full screen mode like this. Uh, of course, with Zorin, that should give you um, <clears throat> spinning to full size. The wallpaper hasn't quite figured that out yet. Um, of course, your Zorin has the ability to load several different platforms. If I remember correctly, I think it's actually based on GNOME. Uh, I, I just don't remember now. I haven't looked their thing up for a little while. But if you purchase the uh, if you purchase the extra package which is like 12 euros um then you actually can get windows and mac clones in it see this thing is just completely frozen on me right now that has nothing to do with the distro it has to do with i'm, I'm guessing it's the the computer the hard drive is is not uh not working out very well let me um Pull that out there, see what I can do. Yeah, so this looks like the machine is pretty much completely frozen. You can see our Linux Mint is dead. Linux Mint I anticipated being dead because the checksum failed, so we're just going to kill that one. Let's see if this one comes back to life. Ah, yeah, it looks like this one came back to life after that. All right. Um, so here you can pick on Zorin. You can pick different types of uh, different types of screen setups. Oh. So here's more of the more traditional GNOME setup, um, or a more Windowsy type setup. If you do pay the extra, uh, the extra. From them, you can get Windows and Mac clones on the Zorin OS. Um, and I have a, a full um, full video walkthrough, I think a, a first impression walkthrough of Zorin. Okay, but there we are. We have verified some ISOs. We installed VirtualBox from nothing and um, made sure and verified that VirtualBox is working. So uh, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, so this has been Tom, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.